Hey everybody, this is the fourth and last part in my video series, New Player to Premium Money Making Guide. In this video, I start with around 4.5 mil and bring it up to my premium payment of around 9 million by doing faction transports, engaging in the band assaults, and doing some roads chests. Okay, so my original plan for a really solid money maker that was worth a little bit more risk was to do faction transports in the yellow zone, going uh, from our town to a neighboring town. However, looking at it now, I'm a little bit wary of doing them from Bridgewatch specifically. I didn't really think about this when I chose Bridgewatch, but the short transports in through yellow zones to Bridgewatch are actually not very short and they're also not very safe. So we'd either have to go all the way to Martlock, which would be all the way over here, which is very long. We either have to cut through red zones, which you really wouldn't want to do, or go all the way to like the zone right outside of Martlock. It doesn't look like a very good transport. And then on the other way, again, Limers is another pretty long one. We'd have to go all the way to this zone over here. Um, where's the thing? Over here. But and it's shorter but it's also the most dangerous transport to go to because there's the most gankers uh, around Limhurst and Bridgewatch so instead of doing that I think we're going to switch our faction transport to doing the short ones to carry on because then we can just go to this zone here and it's fairly close oh the man assault starting um so we only have to cross one red zone if we do that um, and so that means we can sell our boar because we're just going to do this small one so we no longer need a transport mount like a boar we can just use probably a tier three riding horse we're going to go in super cheap gear with three hearts so we really only risk around 150k and that will double our profits every successful trip we get off so i'm gonna um, repair my boar sell my boar and then place some buy orders in for beast hearts uh, so that we can get started on the transport money making method okay so we just put in a buy order for 15 b starts here which is going to give us um either one of the safe transports but we're probably not going to do that so it will get us five of the short transports to carry the on so we're going to wait for those to come in and then we will do that as a money maker okay so as you just saw when i was setting up my buy order for hearts here the bandit assault just started and that's very convenient because that was actually another of the money making strategies that we were going to do so bandit assault means that if we go to the faction warfare tab here all of the ones in the red zone have been reset and been captured by care leon and essentially every faction is now fighting to get as control of as many outposts as possible for the next hour now this is all in the red zone so if we die we're going to lose everything so i've just taken out uh 4.1 gear here so that we can get as many points as possible and if we die the points that we get will probably pay for our set because the points are very high during the bandit assault so we're having a risk here of around 27k so really we only need to get uh, around like half a heart so 1500 points for it to at least pay for our set so we're gonna see how many points we can get from this bandit assault we're a little bit late um, so it's, it's 56 minutes left so we'll probably get there with around 50 minutes left so we, we lost about 10 minutes but let's see how much points we can get just by tagging the bosses and things like that getting all the points that we can from outposts Okay, so we have found the main Bridgewatch group. Just like, looks like they're just zoning out northwest here. So essentially all we're doing is following this large Bridgewatch group. We're going to try to avoid fighting. We might try to steal some loot from bodies if there's fights that happen. But mostly what we care about is we just want to tag the boss once on every outpost that Bridgewatch is doing because we'll get full points for them capturing it. So we're just going to tag the bosses and then we're going to make sure we stay safe. Now Bridgewatch decided not to get that many outposts leaving me without much points however they did get into a three or four man 25 minute long fight in which i was able to steal some incredible loot all right we made it back safely with this loot this is uh, pretty crazy not as many faction points as uh probably would normally expect because there's a lot of fighting there but did manage to snag a great kill there with some juicy loot so we're gonna go actually rather than transport this to bridge watch we're just gonna sell this on the limpers market here hopefully it sells we don't have to check on it a little while later and there's i think there's around 20 minutes left of the bandit faction assault so i think i'll i'll fast travel back to uh bridge watch and try to get back out there but i'm not sure if i'll be able to get much more points um, so let's sell this on the market and then get back out there I tried to get back to the Bridgewatch blob for the rest of the bandit assaults, but wasn't able to find them in time. By the time I find them, it was only around five minutes left and they were done taking outposts, so I wasn't able to get any more points. 
Okay, so Bandit Assault just ended. Looks like I got an extra 2.2k points-ish. So let's see, I ended up at, wow, 9k points. So I got from, I was around 1500, got all the way up to 9k. So that's a little bit under 150k, three hearts there just for the faction points uh so most of it was in the loot although this was a lower end of faction points i would say as only got like uh, a couple of posts but got looks like in total 5.7k there so that's pretty good um well not that great but i did get a good amount of loot that ratted from other people's hard work so that's always great money if you don't want to do the work yourself Okay, so it looks like our buy order came in for the beast starts here, so I'm gonna collect them here, and then we're gonna go and try some of the short contracts, the small ones to carry on. So I'm gonna go get geared here, and uh, let's see how they go. Okay, so if you go to the faction person and you flag up, there will be a tab that opens up in the bottom for trade missions. If we go to carry on contracts, we can see the small one. Okay, so it looks like I, I was gonna test if I needed a bag or not. It looks like I do need a bag to be able to carry it. So if we deliver these three hearts successfully to a spot around carry on, we will get six hearts in return, which essentially doubles our profits. So we're gonna go ahead and accept this. And then we are going to go to Dead Vein Gully here, which is the closest drop off spot right there. Um, so really, if we die in, well, really any of these zones, so our risk is mostly in the package here. It's worth around 150K and then we have 20K of gear. So essentially I'm risking around 170K. If we survive, then I get around 300K back. Um, I'm fully expecting to die on at least one of these trips as they're not super safe, but essentially doubling our money every successful trip. As long as we're successful, over 50% of the time we're going to be making profit. So should be no problem. Um, we're going to go and hope we're successful. So some tips for staying safe while you're doing these faction transports, make sure you keep your eyes ahead of you and not on your character. And then as soon as you see any red name tag, just turn around and go back where you're coming from and find another way around because it's too risky to just run into that red name tag and hope they don't kill you. Also, make sure you don't get tagged by mobs too much as this will lower your mount health and your mount speed for a little while, especially if there's someone on top of you, it just makes you much easier to catch. So try to avoid mobs if you can. Okay, so first trip was successful here. We got six Shadow Hearts. We have enough to do five more trips, so we're going to go do those, and um, hopefully they're as successful as the first one. I only saw like one person the first time, so that's a good sign. Um, and it's currently Bandit Assault, actually. I'm not sure if that makes me more or less safe, but uh, who knows? I only saw one person, so we're going to assume it makes me more safe. Okay, so we just finished up with our last Heart Transport there. Got the last six of them. So we started with 18 of our Fort Sterling Hearts and got in back 36 of the Carleon ones. So we made a profit of 18 hearts here, which means our profit was sitting at around 886k. It took me a little bit over an hour there. So profit is like 800 to 1 mil, 800k to 1 mil an hour for non-premium. That's like some of the best, uh, the best money maker I have done so far. Obviously it has its risks though, having to travel uh, quite a long ways and be able to kill by any other faction player and losing your hearts is sort of dangerous, but uh, definitely really, really great money per hour. So now we're gonna go sell all of these hearts on the market and um, for 1.77 mil approximately, that's a, that's a really Really big chunk of change that we'll be able to cash in there. Okay, so the last money maker that we are going to do is to be going into the roads of Avalon and doing some of the solo chests there. Now, I thought that I would hit tier 8 Reefer by this time in the series, but unfortunately we're not quite there yet, so we probably won't be able to do the tier 8 chests, which is going to be um, a little bit sad because those are the best ones to do, but hopefully we can still get some good money off of the T4 and T6 ones. I might actually try some tier 8 to see what, if we can do them without Reaver or not, um, but hopefully it'll still be some good money. I'm going to go buy another set of gear, just probably a 4.1 armor and 5.1 weapons, and then we'll head out to the roads. Okay, so we're all geared up and ready to go. We're going to go into probably the yellow zones here, and we're not going to do one that's right outside of the town because those are going to have a lot of people in them, and we kind of want to avoid people since we're just trying to do some dungeons and some uh, solo chest areas. So we're going to go probably one map away at least from Bridgewatch before we find a road to go into. So to get to the roads, there'll be these little portals all over the map. They have these weird names with dashes in them if you hover over them. Once you go in there, there'll be these like green chests. Those are the solo chest areas that we're mainly looking at. There's also blue ones. Those are group ones and yellow ones, which are large group ones. And then there's also some solo dungeons that you can find in there. They have little green portals on the map. However, those don't close behind you until they're dove quite often. So you have to be very careful if you do decide to do them. 
However, those slow dungeons do have some really good loot, as their loot bonus is 610%, which makes them uh, some of the best money in the game. Okay, so we just did around an hour of roads. I kind of got lost and went super deep, so we ended up in Fort Sterling's Black Zone. So we uh, went back through the Fort Sterling Black Zone portal and relocked to Fort Sterling, which is uh, whatever. I, I don't really need to be locked to Bridgewatch, so we're just going to sell the loot that we have here in Fort Sterling. I got around, uh, let's see, I got this Demon Cape as well. So in total, it's around 500k of loot plus a silver bag, so around 600k in an hour. Very good. Well, not hey, pretty good. I, I mean, it's about as good as the solo dungeons would be. Um, so, and we got like average luck, I would say, no purple, no gold chests, but we did find a nice solo dungeon to do, so, uh, again, pretty good money maker, very similar to solo dungeons though, so really just whatever you prefer. So that's really all the money makers that I plan to cover in this video series. If you haven't hit your premium money by now, just choose whatever one was your favorite, and do that one until you hit premium. Personally, I did a couple more bandit assaults as I just happened to log in right when they were starting and was able to get some fairly decent points as well as rat an incredible amount of loot. Okay, so it has been a couple days since I last came on to give everything time to sell and we are now at 8.5 mil, just a little bit over 8.5 mil and the premium cost is 8.4 mil, just a little bit under that. So we have made enough money for our premium payment. Now I'm not actually going to go ahead and buy premium on this account as this is probably the last time I'm going to play it as this was the sort of only purpose for this account. But now that you have your premium money I would suggest to go ahead and buy it right away as long as you have like one set of gear still left on you so you're not with, left with literally nothing. Just because literally every activity in the game becomes around 50% faster when you have premium as well as you have more learning points now and focus and stuff like that so you can now move on to crafting and refining and gathering much more comfortably than you could have before. Also, the vast majority of money makers that we use in this series just get better with premium money, so go ahead and pop that, and then really you can play however you want to. My suggestion for what to do after you have premium is to first just do some fun activities uh, and get your premium money back. Make sure you have that sitting there for your next premium payment, and then I would suggest to go ahead and invest in some laborers and islands and stuff like that so you can get some monthly income. I personally don't do that because I'm sort of lazy and I don't need to, but if you just search up on YouTube a laborer's guide, you can see plenty of good videos about how to get that sorted out for some good passive income. But anyways, that's it for this series. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope this video helped you get your first premium payment done. If you followed along with me, I hope it was easy to follow and you were all as successful as me. But that is it. If you want to see more new player oriented content, make sure to let me know in the comments. Give this video a thumbs up and tell me what sort of new player content you want to see next. Right.